a new world pope for an old world church. Buonasera. From his first good evening, Pope Francis, dressed in simple vestments, signaled he would minister differently. Just the way he came out, dressed as he was, said something. It was a statement. I mean, I will be Jorge Bergoglio. I will be myself in this new vocation or this new mission. What a wonderful entrance. But few could have predicted a year ago the stunning influence of the Francis effect. This man is a daily surprise. Pope Francis has popped up in the most unlikely places. <laughs> Breaking down barriers in a church battling for relevance. In a year, he's gone from Pope who? Boy, I'm Francis boy. To a well-known brand for Catholic Inc. Taking some of the pomp out of the papacy. Then everyone was just coming and getting their picture taken with this cardboard cutout. And it ben Turland, a Catholic youth worker, used the cutout at a university welcome week in Toronto. And I asked, are you Catholic? And some said yes, some said no. They just said, I like this guy. I like this Pope, I saw him on TV, I saw him in a magazine, I just want to get my picture with him. You wouldn't think a student would want that, but they're showing there's a change of heart happening. So what is the attraction? Well, he smiles a lot, for one. He speaks off script, goes off piste. Last week, he offered two delighted boys a spin in the Pope mobile. Inside the Vatican, he challenges entitlement, pushing out advisors who managed poorly the Vatican Bank. But it is his daily reminders of the poor and disadvantage which have become his signature. This Easter and last, Pope Francis washed the feet of those at the margins. Men, but also significantly women, a departure for any pope. He's kissed babies, but also other faces, grossly disfigured, like this man suffering from neurofibromatosis, a genetic disease. Francis is reminding Catholic clergy, including cardinals, their job is to serve. And then in 1922, it was completely restored. Retained, in Canada's oldest Roman Catholic parish, and the Archbishop the of Quebec, Christmas, Gerald Lacroix, was among the first new cardinals named by Pope Francis in February. He told us the day we were created cardinals, now you're not entering to a royal court here. This is not a promotion, uh, and this is not an honor, and it's not a decoration. It's a call. Pope Francis is humble, but that humility cloaks a firm and sometimes rigid clergyman, writes biographer Paul Vallely. He describes a younger Francis, then Jorge Bergoglio, head of provincial Jesuits in Argentina. He was a very authoritarian and rather reactionary uh, figure. A lot of the Jesuits in the province which he governed didn't like that, and he left uh, the Jesuits in Argentina split when he finished. Bergoglio went on a two-year retreat, what he called an inner spiritual crisis. When he emerged as the bishop in Buenos Aires, he went out into the slums and spent a lot of time with the poor. He had an entirely different leadership style. But it is folly, he says, to confuse Francis's humility with a liberal approach to church doctrine. The secular media assumes that because he's warm and friendly, he's going to change the teachings that they don't like. And that's not going to happen, because as he has put it, I am a son of the church. He's an orthodox man. Popular press has a crush on this pope, Time's Person of the Year. Maclean's, he will change history, or at least save the church. The cover of Rolling Stone anointed him with the cool cachet. When the Rolling Stone cover came out, um, at least two people said to me, Oh Mary, you're very holy. Um, Pope Francis may just make you, just may give you the chance to become a priest. Hold on. Mary O'Regan wrote a blog recently for the Catholic Herald in London suggesting people are confused over Pope Francis. He has a um, liberal reputation but a conservative record. In 2010, 
he clashed mightily with the president of Argentina, Mrs. Kirchner, over gay marriage. She wanted to bring in gay marriage. He opposed her. She called uh, the then Cardinal Bergoglio medieval because he um, opposed gay marriage. The Pope made headlines on homosexuality with his words in an impromptu scrum. Interpreted by some as a door opening to gay marriage. That's not what's going to happen. Most of the time when I try to say that to anyone, they kind of react with shock, horror. How could this great um, liberal revolutionary pope who's so kind, um, how could he be against gay marriage? The reality clashes with their dream figure um, and it shows that they are in love with a pope of their own creation. The Catholic flock has shrunk to a fraction of what it once was in Canada. In another bold move, Francis asked average Catholics, not clergy, to answer a questionnaire on things like premarital sex, birth control and divorce, leading up to a synod on the family, the first in 35 years. The questionnaire was to look at really the, how things are. And what did they say? Well, they said that there are a lot of very important questions. But Cardinal, a lot of people have left the church because they don't simply agree with some of the church teachings. We know all the controversial mm -hmm. subjects, uh, sure. family, social mores, homosexuality, women priests. Will any of these things change under Pope Francis? We'll have to wait and see. The fundamental things will not change, I'm sure. Don't so, expect... But what's fundamental? Well, for example, uh, the respect for life. That's a fundamental issue. So no abortion? Abortion will never be uh, blessed by the church or accepted by the church or euthanasia. That's no. Uh, he's also said uh, in other issues like women priests. Don't wait for that. The church teaching will not change. He said it again recently. What is changing is the Vatican response to sexual abuse. This Pope, as well as Benedict before him, must answer for that dark church chapter. Two weeks ago, meeting with kids and leaders of a Catholic children's society, Pope Francis said the church will not take one step backwards on the personal and moral damage, nor on necessary sanctions. He asked for forgiveness. But it's a long road back. I was raped by a priest a lot of time, a lot of months, when I was 13 years old. And uh, all the priests that I talked at that time said to me, you have to pray and you have to apologize. Apologize to whom? To him. Surprise, Frank uh, Tremblay was abused at Saint Alphonse, a Catholic boarding school outside Quebec City. Twenty-five years later, he went to police. Father Raymond Marie Lavoie was convicted of molesting 13 boys, sentenced to five years. He served 26 months. Over a dozen men are now suing the college and the Redemptorist Order for covering it up. You have a lot of problems when you are a victim of uh, sexual abu abuse when you're a child. Do you think this pope will make a difference on the sexual abuse issue? No, not now. It's the same as the, the, the pope before. It's the same as Jean-Paul II did. They did nothing. They always did nothing. Why? Because they don't want to pay. Does it um, touch your heart? that Pope Francis is talking about sexual abuse in the way that he is? <laughs> it touch anything. It touch anything for me. He, he just wants to protect. That's it, that's all. Pope Francis has invited a former victim to an advisory committee on how to prevent abuse. But the diocese still must answer for the past. Very close to here, the seminary in Saint Anne de Beaupre. Mm -hmm. Ten priests accused of molesting boys over 30 years. The people who were victims of that abuse are not moved by Pope Francis's words. There's no more pushing under the rug. This is over. This has been over for years now. I mean, 30, 40, 50 years ago, 
the church and in other parts of society did things differently. But today we address these issues immediately. Do you think he needs to go further? Well, we cannot, you know, we cannot push this issue aside. It's hurt so many people. We need to do two things. We need to continue to accompany those who have suffered, those who have been victims, take good care of those who have abused, but we also need to work on prevention. We also need to continue to make sure that this never happens again. Going home to South America last year, Pope Francis was treated like a rock star. His flock is growing there, but even in North America, there are early signs he's restoring pride in being Catholic. I think it's just contagious, and so people want to know what he's saying and doing. And I think people who've turned away from the church or people who are questioning, he has an, an amazing capability to draw them back. Oftentimes, this year, I've had people come up to me and say, you know, Bishop, I've been away from the church for 20, 30 years, but this Pope is convincing me to come back. An enigma still, he rattles those who long for conformity and confounds those trying to peg him as liberal or conservative. He's completely unpredictable. He doesn't clear things in advance with the Vatican authorities. He keeps his own diary. He makes his own announcements. Nobody knows what he's going to do next. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, Toronto.